Domito to show up uh, shortly, and Selectman Kalenda is absent this evening. Uh, the first item, uh, Mr. Donovan, uh, update on the library strategic plan. Uh, welcome. Why don't you come up to the microphone here, or sit, stand, do whatever you're comfortable with. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for the material you, you submitted. Uh, I, I and I, I am confident all members of this board would read your strategic plan. We, we know what's in it. It's online for the public to digest as well. So thank you for pre preparing that. It was, uh, it was comprehensive and, and perhaps a bit aggressive, but again, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the effort. Uh, so the floor is yours, sir. It's, I, I would say it's a little ambitious maybe, but okay. hopefully not, uh, not aggressive. All right. Um, so yeah, the whole process really started um, last at the end of last year um, we I was just sort of looking for more community feedback and so we started to construct a, uh, a community survey which actually became the first step I think in, in what became the five-year plan um, I uh, formed a committee of uh, uh, town officials the assistant town administrator Vanessa Hale and the facilities director uh, John Parent were uh, part of my committee. Um, there were also several residents, um, representatives from our friends group, uh, Beth Mello and Dolores Fallon, who ended up becoming appointed as a library trustee, uh, and Richard um, and Marguerite, who was our vice chair, Marguerite Landry, were also part of the committee. Um, we had an advisor from MLS who sort of does this with a, a lot of uh, libraries in Massachusetts. That's the Massachusetts library system. She came out and advised our first meeting. Um, the results of which are one of the appendices uh, that's included in the uh, final plan. Uh, we also, after that, after our second meeting, we looked at putting together focus groups. Uh, so we tried to get as many people to attend these and to sign up uh, as we could. I included the focus group questions. I think that's the very last uh, appendix. If I'm not mistaken um, we only got 22 residents which was a little uh, disheartening I was hoping we could get at least 50 um, but that you know helps me plan I think next time we do another strategic plan mm -hmm. uh, so you know we I sort of tried to take what people were asking for what people expected from their library and I tried to make it as concise and direct as I could well we we certainly appreciate the update, uh, and as I said, it was uh, the overview was was particularly helpful. Um, I, I, the community survey you had 342 responses, which is uh, a very healthy number. Um, one question I had: it seems like uh, the, the, the question you asked in the survey is is what additional services or additional uh, activities or let me see exactly the word you use here. Um, if the library were to introduce any of the following services, which would you be interested in using? And you listed four of them, and it seemed like what came out on top was the, the cafe uh, style type of reading uh, area. Um, is that, when you talk about expansion, your building expansion, is, is that what your overall goal is, is, is to try to focus in that area? Or you, is, is it just too premature at this stage to even talk about those details? Really, really sort of the, uh, I would say the precursor for, for this particular plan is there's a, a grant cycle through the state where we can get um, planning and design money mm -hmm. in order to sort of look at our infrastructure. You know, one of the things that we're, the board and I um, are always conscious of is that flood that happened several years ago and how to sort of, you know, um, how to protect the building against that. You know, it's, it's very problematic given the fact that we're sort of at the bottom of a, a gigantic catch basin. Um, I was actually expecting from that question a lot of people to get excited about self-checkout, which I do think a substantial number, more than I expected actually uh, were, said that they would uh, utilize a self-check. But the coffee question was something that had kind of, um, 
that had come up before in sort of conversations I had had with residents. And I was very surprised by the number of people. I think part of it is that when Moro's closes, there's not really a place downtown where you can sort of go in and, and grab a cup of coffee. Um, that wasn't something specifically, I think, that we were thinking of when we were mm -hmm. thinking about planning and design or we're thinking about library expansions. I really think we're going to look at how we could potentially add something like that in the next five years. You know, a lot of libraries set up uh, small Keurig stations, that might be something that we pursue. The, the self-checkout, is, 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 it, is it more than just purchasing the equipment or the machine or whatever it is that checks you out? Or, and obviously a certain amount of training, but th that to me would seem to be a very achievable short-term goal and it, it seemed like there were some residents that were concerned about the wait time that they had to wait to check out. I mean, is that something that could be implemented in, in short order? I actually just, uh, I'm sort of in the grant cycle right now with yep. the Southborough Community Fund, so we've uh, written a grant okay. for the purchase of a self-check machine. So, you know, fingers crossed, I'm hoping and, that... And, and obviously, before you know it, uh, budget season is going to be upon us in, in Springtown meeting. Do you have, again, this may be an unfair question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, do you have any expectations about having any additional either articles or uh, increase in budgets? Uh, budget requests to satisfy some of these goals or again have you not talked about that yet as a group the the board and I that's on our next meetings okay. agenda is is taking a look at the budget and obviously we're gonna have uh, conversations with the town administrator uh, you know the finance director with advisory so I do think that that some of that is preliminary but this is sort of in the back of my mind as I'm putting together a budget is that a lot of these services I, I can't offer completely for free right. so I think part of it is that you know there is a, a sort of a graph at the end of the needs assessment area which sort of charts out target years for right. for implementation of some of these goals I think depending on how the budget cycle goes you know we may be able to to do less than what we wanted for a particular year, we may be able to do more. It's going to be sort of dependent, I think, on a lot of those conversations and working with those groups. Most of the, the successful uh, efforts I have seen uh, in this town start early in terms of the budgetary requests, so I would encourage you to, to have that meeting and then start working on it because before you know it, we're going to be talking about closing the warrant. And uh, so, I, I, Mrs. Fenner? Great report. Uh, focus group forums that you held, do you think it might be the time of day that you did it or who you were trying to solicit to come to the library? So we tried uh, actually offering them at different times and I found I tried to do some day uh, day focus groups and those were actually the less successful ones. It was actually in the evening that we got more people. Um, it, it, were I to do it over, um, I would only, I think, do them in the evening. I think that's where we had the best turnout. Um, but I was trying to get sort of a cross-section. I do think that the people who came to our day ones were ones that couldn't come to the, the evening uh, groups. You know, I think part of it was uh, feedback I got from, from uh, many residents were that it was in June. June is a really tough month. You know, I think you can make that argument for a, a lot of the other months. You know, if the weather's bad, people might not come out then. Um, um, I actually, I will sort of give a, a shout out to Marnie Houlihan, who uh, was a resident who helped try to advertise the focus groups and get the word out um, to, I think there was like a school listserv that she was able to circulate it on. And we actually, I mean, part of the reason I just got the over 20 was, I think a lot uh, was due to Miss Houlihan's help. So thanks. Uh, but again, I mean, I, I would think that my approach, I might even uh, work with a uh, somebody who does this more professionally with uh, as far as uh, getting focus group participants, that was, I would say, the most difficult part of the plan for me. Uh, I, the reason I asked that question, we just had a, a forum for Shopsy, and even <coughs> though it was 24 individuals, the expectation was that it would have been a larger number. And I'm, I was looking for an idea whether it had to do with the time in your situation, but it's great, thank you. We actually, I, I was, uh, I was surprised by how active the groups were. Like, as, even though they were small, uh, people came and they were very, uh, they participated yeah. very heavily in them. And so, you know, that was, that was great for me. It was great to have those sort of one-on-one -on -one talks with people. I think if they were bigger, I wouldn't have gotten as much sort of individual feedback as I did. So, you know, I sort of had a good takeaway right. from it. They were there because they wanted to be there. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Mr. Shea. 
no questions, just a comment following up on Mr. Rooney's comment as well about the upcoming budget season and starting early. Uh, I'd also think that you're in a good position having prepared this report, having to, you know, being able to substantiate the, you know, requests that you have as well with this report. I think it's going to go a long way. I know back when I was on advisory, we always looked to have as much data as possible to substantiate the requests that we had uh, from the various departments. So great job. I'll do it from here. Okay. <coughs> um, for those who, who don't know it, <coughs> your library, like most other departments in town, is in very, very good hands uh, between our library staff and our board of trustees. And, um, you know, spread the word on that because um, th there is a lot there. The resources are um, as good as, uh, as I think we can get them for what we're spending. And, uh, and I hope people appreciate that. Um, and uh, I have confidence that that will continue for years to come. I appreciate the work. Um, anything further? Mr. Wallace, would you like to add anything? Um, well, we want to thank you for, for inviting us and giving us an opportunity to you know, speak to you and, and sort of show, show you what we're, we're doing. Yeah, and like I said earlier, the, this type of report is, we read them um, and we appreciate them. And uh, it helps us a lot in understanding what you do on a day-to-day -day basis because, uh, we, you know, we, we don't know unless we get this information. So thank you very much. And I, I don't have pre-printed copies for residents, but if any resident wants to come in and, and take a look or wants me to print them a copy of the plan, I'm happy to do that. Well, part of our agenda packet, when we publish it, we also publish links to various documents that we review in preparation for the meeting. and so release those with access to the computer if they want to get a copy of your strategic plan they can get it numerous different ways either through the library website or by looking at our agenda and then just following that link uh, yeah a resident already reached out to me yesterday because I guess she didn't she didn't know how uh, dense the plan was so she was very pleasantly surprised that you know <laughs> better part of an evening reading so well, thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you. That's right. So we have a few uh, minutes before 6.45 p.m. Um, and I just want to note, uh, make one comment. Um, congratulations, thank you. Um, it was back in 1985 when, I believe it was 1985 when Ronald Reagan was starting his sec just starting his second term that Maureen Colleri came to work for the town of Southboro. Uh, tomorrow she'll be celebrating her 30th year here um, and would like to acknowledge her and thank her for her services. Um, she is uh, she's really the glue that holds a lot of this together in terms of her getting documents prepared, preparing all the licenses, preparing all the committees. Um, and uh, we, we that work with her know what she does. A lot of people in town do not know what she does, but again, to be 30 years at one job and uh, to do it in the manner in which she does, I just wanted to recognize her and thank her and, and uh, see if we could get it perhaps another 30 years out of her. Uh, perhaps unrealistic, but uh, it'd be nice. It would be nice. Um, the next item, uh, Public Safety Study Committee. Um, if I am correct, we have four candidates for three positions. Um, we interviewed at our last meeting uh, Ken Franks, Peter Goodney, and Brennan Barry, mm -hmm. and we told them at that time that it was not necessary for them to uh, come back this evening. We decided not to make a, a, an appointment that evening because there were some additional residents in town that had indicated an interest. And uh, one thing that we try to do is we try to make sure that we are uh, uh, receptive to those requests. And uh, there is one individual, I believe he is here, Jason Malinowski. Sir, could you just step forward? Uh, very informal process. Just tell us a little bit about who you are um, what you do and, and why you would like to be on this public safety committee. We've read your, 
we've read your application and your supporting documents, but there are a lot of people in town, myself included, who don't know you, so just tell us a little bit about you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I wanted to thank the entire board for welcoming me here tonight. Uh, my name is Jason Malinowski. I moved to town about two and a half years ago with my wife. We recently welcomed our first child, and we plan to make Southboro our home for the next 30, 50, 70, 80 years, however, however long health will uh, allow us. And um, as you can tell by my resume, I kind of have wear two hats. Uh, one is as a CPA for a large consulting firm in the city, and I've also uh, served as a pre -DM firefighter and EMT for the town of Boxborough for the last eight plus years and previously was with the town of Littleton. Um, with that being said, when I heard that the Public Safety, Public Safety Facility Committee was being formed, um, I naturally thought of my two hats that I wear on a daily basis and thought that my skills lent themselves to being able to articulate to the town residents why a facility would be needed, whether you do two separate facilities, one combined facility, um, the location of the facility, because I already understand how the operations work on a daily basis and able to bring kind of a financial project management perspective to the committee. So that was what brought me, you know, got my attention, thought it was a great way to get involved with the town and offer some of the expertise that I have. Thank you. Um, what about your available time? Do you have, uh, you just mentioned uh, uh, welcoming a new child uh, and uh, you obviously work full time. Mm -hmm. This committee, they, they, they do a lot of work in a very short period of time. Have you have that considered that? And yes, I have. I think you're, you're able to uh, yes. fit into that. Mm -hmm. In terms of where the committee is at, they, uh, we're in the process, we're, tonight we'll be awarding a, a contract for the feasibility study. So it's moving right along. It's a good time to get involved in the committee and jump right in. But uh, um, I'll open up the, the board to, if anyone has any questions. And, uh, and then we'll vote. We'll, we're going to make the appointments this evening. So stay tuned. Mr. Smino? Yeah, could, could you just clarify? Uh, you, you said a per diem firefighter in Boxborough. Is that, is that still the case? Yeah, I'm Correct. a uh, per diem lieutenant EMT. So um, I bid shifts every month. Um, so some months I work more than others. I'm a non union. Um, employee. Uh, we have a combination union, non-union department, um, and I've worked there, you know, as I stated, for eight years. So, and, and how does that fit with your CPA employment? In other words, uh, are you full time as a CPA as well? I am. So it's a lot of hours. It's a lot of hours, but scheduling makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing else for me, Mr. Chairman. Um, Welcome. It's not unusual for firefighters at whatever level to wear multiple hats, so I appreciate that. Uh, I am curious, though, that you're a guest speaker for the um, state fire marshal? Yes. In what I've, capacity? Um, I've Just presented curious. at three of the state marshal. State fire marshal annually holds a public education conference in September, and on three instances I've been invited to speak on behalf of the Town of Boxborough is the public education coordinator on programs that we've instituted. Okay. And you've authorized uh, and have been successful in grant writing. Yes. Federal assistant. Could you give me an example? Um, we, um, so every, so I've worked under two chiefs in the Town of Boxborough. Okay. And each time we've had a grant, I've, you know, helped him, um, each chief uh, co-author certain ones. Um, our last successful one was for turnout gear and for certain ventilation uh, devices that hook up to the back of the fire trucks. They're known as plat they're called Plymovets. Um, we've had unsuccessful ones too, in full disclosure. And every year, I write the uh, state uh, safe grant. Thank you, Mr. Shea. The, the um, CPA firm that you work with, they're located where? Uh, it's a national firm, but it's, I'm based in Boston. You're based in Boston. Okay, and I guess. Uh, I know that the committee has most of the meetings that they've held have been I think around six o'clock in the evening start time you think that would be yeah I, that I work problem. from home a lot as well okay so it's again scheduling yep <laughs> excellent um, any further questions all right as I indicated uh, when we started we have four candidates for three positions uh, and I'll just open it up for any further discussion with regards to the uh, the entire universe of candidates or uh, to entertain any motions. I'll make a motion. Mrs. Faneth. Uh, uh, well, actually, quite, I guess procedural question. Do we need to 
vote the new charge of the committee before we vote the new membership? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. So in terms of the revised committee charge, again, I assume everyone has read it. I, uh, I spoke with uh, Mr. Hamilton and I was at the committee meeting last night when they interviewed the, uh, the applicants and the, the, the committee, uh, and Mr. Hamilton, you can correct me if I'm wrong, has seen the revised charge and, are, and is comfortable with it. Um, and so uh, I, would, uh, I would move and, unless there's any further discussion. That's uh, with the it. October 6th date on the bottom of it. in my packet yes yes okay. so I would move that uh, we adopt the revised charge of the town of Southboro Public Su Safety Study Committed Committee dated October 6 2015 second any further discussion all in favor aye, aye. Thank you, Mr. Shea, for pointing that out. Right. Now, with regards to the uh, the filling of the committee uh, members, Mrs. Faniff? I'd like to make a motion to appoint Jason Melanoski. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Perfect. Say the Public Safety Study Committee for a term for one year. Is there a second? Second. And the reason uh, behind my recommendation for your vote is that we could use a financial individual on the committee. He has that expertise. He's a firefighter EMT, understands the operation of a fire department, its personnel, and he states that he also works from home. So his availability is, has been recognized and confirmed. Any further discussion? Only to say, I just assume we would do all three at once. <clears throat> we can do it this way. <clears throat> Yeah, why don't we just take them one at a time since we started that way. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. I don't know if you know Mr. Hamilton. He's seated in the back there. You may want to introduce yourself to him. <laughs> and there's two other members, three other members three of the members. committee. There's fire chief over there, and there's two more individuals in the back. So you get it. You'll be off and running. You need to be sworn in by the town clerk. I don't know if Mr. Hegarty is, is still here this evening. If he's not, you need to be I don't sworn in. He's here for yeah. he's on. Okay. Thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you. Um, is there another motion? I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Brennan Barry for the Public Safety Study Committee. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Uh, Mr. Barry is a firefighter and he stated that his availability, even with his schedule, he can uh, accommodate. Um, I'm not opposed to Mr. Barry. I, uh, I'm not opposed uh, to Mr. Franks. I'm probably opposed to both of them together. So this vote for me precludes Mr. Franks, and I just want to make that clear okay. if, we, if we press forward on this one. Um, all in favor of Mr. Barry? Aye. 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 Congratulations, Mr. Barry. In absentia, we will uh, notify you by letter. Unanimous. That was unanimous. Correct. Mr. Yes. Shea? Yes. Uh, is there another motion? I'll make a motion to appoint Peter Gundy to the Public Safety Study Committee. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any uh, further discussion? Uh, my recommendation is based on the fact that we have Mr. Lyons, who I believe is on a police department. Mr. Gundy is on a police department in a local community, which would bring two that are familiar with the police department, two on the fire department, an accountant and an individual is aware with co of contract negotiations for RFPs. And, and I would just Hamilton. I would just add that with the appointment of Mr. Malinowski, we also have a third yes. uh, firefighter. So uh, with no no um, aspersions uh, on Mr. Franks, but uh, as I said the last meeting, I am concerned that we don't uh, either perceive to be or actually overload the committee uh, in one direction or another. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so that is unanimous. The committee is fully appointed. So, and again, procedurally, because we have the new membership spelled out, do we technically need to reappoint Mr. Hamilton, Lyons, Wood, and Moorhead? No. Or are they? No. 
No. No, the, okay. their appointment is good. Very good. Thank you. Um, and, and given that Mr. Hamilton and three other members of that committee are here, I want to bring up consent agenda item number nine uh, so that we can address that while they're here and then they can, uh, they can certainly stay if they choose to or they can go and often do uh, other things. But um, unless there's an objection to moving that. Hearing none, um, consent agenda item nine, award contract for public safety complex feasibility and design consultant. Um, I received an email uh, from Mr. Hamilton today, and, along with Mr. Purple, which Mr. Purple then sent to the other members of the committee, indicating that uh, the other members of the board, other members of the board, indicating that they had vetted the uh, applicants last night and they came up with a recommendation. Mr. Hamilton, you just want to just give a very brief overview of the process last night so, to uh, fill in the, the board. Thank you, Al Hamilton, uh, Chair of the Public Safety Building Study Committee. I can never get the name right. Oh, yeah, we met with three actually very good applicants. They all did a very good job. <clears throat> the, the good news is, is that we had three good choices, and um, we ended up with uh, Dunham and Sweeney. We thought that they had extensive experiences. One of our members actually had experiences working with them. Their references turned out well. We, we, we could have done well, I think, with any of them, but that seemed to, they, they put a little bit of extra work into their presentation in terms of building some, some sort of drawings and models of, of what they were thinking about and engaging. So uh, that is our re recommendation. The recommendation is unanimous. Thank you. Um, and I can just, uh, again, Mr. Hamilton, you've heard it many times <coughs> from, from this board and from me I, in terms of the, uh, the manner in which you are operating and the committee is functioning is is at, at a very high level. Thank you for that. Thank you for the uh, the schedule that you've been keeping. Um, I, I witnessed the committee in action last night, and uh, again, it is truly a, a committee that this town can can be very feel very comfortable and proud of. So, um, with that, I would uh, uh, move that. Uh, the town award the contract for the public safety complex feasibility and design consultant to Dunham and Sweeney. Dunham and Sweeney in the amount of twenty-five thousand dollars. Is there a second? A uh, second. Um, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Mr. Chairman, before we go on, I just want to thank the members of the committee um, as a newly minted ex officio member of the committee. Um, I, it was a, uh, you know, we had, I think, about 42 um, um, basically submittals for interest to get copies of the RFP, resulted in 10 um, responses. And, you know, the committee did a real nice job. I thought it was very thoughtful in putting everything together. And as Mr. Hamilton said, you know, we really had three great choices last night. and. Uh, you know, so I think that uh, again, this is the des uh, the consultant that we'll move forward with for the conceptual design for the site, for the site selection, and and look at those pieces and everything. And again, in a perfect world, this is the company we'd like to move forward with for the entire project. But you know, we can uh, uh, we can always decide to um, uh, you know to, uh, to to choose someone else should uh, you know should uh, the situation occur. But we're very happy moving forward with Donovan Sweeney right this time. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Thank you. Um, are we expecting any uh, a a applicants for uh, the sidewalk construction recommendation committee to be here for interviews this evening? I believe that Jane Goring is supposed to be here, and that was scheduled for 7:15. So okay. there's still some time. So we will uh, we will hold off until 7:15 to to uh, address that. Why don't we uh, skip down to? Uh, Mr. Purple, Town Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to give you... Yeah, I'll come back to that. An update on um, the, uh, the Route 9 water main project. Um, uh, Mr. Shea had, had sent me something earlier asking about this, and it was very timely. The, uh, the water main project on Route 9 started last night. Um, the contractor... Uh, was dropping off equipment uh, and erecting signs and doing some test pits. Um, they're going to continue their night work. Um, the state would like to have that 
shut down and buttoned up for the winter by November 1st. Um, but if the weather is good, they may give them another couple of weeks. Um, the, uh, the plans right now are to install the main on the westbound side of Route 9 between Pleasant Street and Central Street. And then they're going to install the main from Oak Hill Road to Brook Lane um, on the eastbound side. That's pretty much all we can hope for to them to get done in this construction season. Um, but that's going to take them out of the most problematic locations that we have. So if we can get that work done now, you know, that would be great. Um, they will be back then in the spring to finish the project. And all work is still scheduled to be completed uh, before Mass DOT begins their work and their overlay work, um, you know, next summer, next fall. So we're still right on schedule and, uh, you know, we'll see that they maintain that schedule. So that's the, uh, the first piece, just a couple of quick things. Um, on the next meeting on October 20th, um, Brian Valentine, the finance director will be here and we'll be doing a presentation for the board. Um, just kind of uh, closing out the, the, um, the, the past, discussing the present and uh, looking at the future in terms of our budget. So we'll be uh, talking about uh, closing out fiscal year 15, uh, where we sit in terms of fiscal 16 with expenditures and, and revenues, even though we don't have a whole lot of a picture just yet, um, and uh, where we're looking at in fiscal 17. If you recall, the end of October last year, we threw up some items that we've been talking about with departments and just to kind of get a flavor from the board of these things that you'd be interested in hearing more about as we move through our budget process. If there was something that there really wasn't an interest in, we can put that back on the shelf. Um, there's, there's plenty of things to, to, fill the, to fill the gaps. So we'll be doing that at the next meeting. Um, Plan to invite advisory to that meeting yes, as well? Yes, absolutely. We did that last year as well. Um, on November 3rd, um, we'll be holding the tax classification hearing. The Board of Assessors will be coming. And uh, that's the annual um, classification hearing where the board determines a single split tax rate. So you'll be getting the presentation from the assessors. There'll be information coming out to you prior to the meeting to review so you can have a little bit of, uh, uh, of information on that and be, be prepared for that as well. The uh, last item I have on Friday, um, and we've been trying to schedule this for a while, um, Senator Eldridge uh, came down uh, to Southboro uh, to the MBTA station. Um, the indication was is that there may be some money coming forward from uh, for MBTA stations to make improvements. Uh, we asked the senator to come out and take a look and, and walk with us, uh, the station. So myself, Jennifer Burney, uh, Doreen Ferguson, uh, Joe Morrow, uh, and um, uh, Freddie Gillespie uh, came out. Uh, MBTA officials were there and, and just took a look around. We walked the property. We walked the adjacent property, uh, looked at some issues, things that need to be repaired and um, just wanted the senator to kind of get a boots on the ground view of what we're talking about. So when we send him a letter requesting money to, for these things to be repaired, he will understand and be able to advocate for those because he's seen them. Um, and you know whether or not it's money that comes out of MBTA's budget for maintenance or whether it's gonna be something supplemental that, that will cover multiple stations and the senator and uh, uh, Representative Dykema can advocate for us on our behalf. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll be forwarding a letter to uh, to the senator so that he can carry forward that that uh, with the prospect of us hopefully getting some funding just just curious if the sure. timing worked out that there was an arriving train so he could witness firsthand how people have to walk down to 85 underneath the bridge back up into the parking lot we, we, we had hoped that there would be one um, now there may have been one I was not there for the first 15 minutes I was delayed in dealing with something um, but uh, I, Joe Okay. All right. So, but he did. He did get to see, you know, some of the some of the issues that need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. There was also some other issues, um, in, you know, in the in adjacent uh, wooded areas. There's a pathway that leads into Hopkinton, into their trail system. Um, so, uh, Freddie was talking about potentially, you know, looking at uh, some CPC funds, or doing uh, doing something along those lines about you know trying to make some improvements there so i think there were a lot of ideas that were generated there was some uh, uh some things uh, that were left over from when the station was built that were never properly cleaned up so there there was a lot i think that people saw that you don't normally see um we we got away from the actual infrastructure and moved out over the whole property mm -hmm. so you know he was traipsing through the woods and and everything else so it, it was a good visit it was a good visit i have a question sure if you walk down the walkway between the parking proposed parking area and the resident 
residential home, there's a dead tree at the end of that sidewalk. It's either a very large elm or oak. The homeowner brought that to the MBTA in James. Is it on town property? MBTA? Private property? Uh, if somebody could find out who owns that tree, uh, it would be nice to take care of it. Thank you. I know that was noted by the homeowners because they were working as well. So this, they did. Okay. I just also want to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, St. Mark's School. Um, on uh, Saturday night, they had uh, their 150th uh, celebration. Um, they had uh, about 1,100 people under an enormous tent. Um, they had a band. They had uh, catering, which serving 1,000 people, you'd think the food was would be cold or rubbery. It was neither. Um, <laughs> They had a fireworks display. Uh, the town was well represented. There was a planning board uh, representative, board of health, economic development committee, um, board of selectmen. I mean, there's always a, a danger in, in, in starting to say who was there for the fear that I'm going to miss someone. Recreation was there. Uh, there were four firefighters, EMTs there stationed to help out. There was a police detail. Um, Overall, it was an extremely successful uh, event for St. Mark's, and uh, we thank them for their generosity and their invitations to us. Uh, it was, uh, they made a special, uh, Mr. Smina, you'd be interested in this, they made a special uh, note of, of uh, Mr. Burnett and uh, the founding of the St. Mark's School, the, the year of the Civil War, and how important Mr. Burnett is to the St. Mark's School, so we may want to follow that up at some point in the future. Um, so uh, we still need to uh, wait. Yeah, I'm going to get public comment a at the end just because I thought there'd be more to talk about rather than just going right into public comment. But if you want to use it now. Um, it's actually about the MBTA. Sure, absolutely. Desiree Asselbeke in 137 Woodland Road. Um, I'm so glad that Mr. Purple brought up that walk um, with Senator Eldridge at the MBTA. Um, I know that that had come up during their Carolyn or Representative Dykema and, and the Senator's talk that you had um, a few months ago relative to budget priorities. And I know that Mr. Semino had brought up that one of the number one complaints of residents who travel there and use MBTA services is that there's no walkover. So I was wondering, Mr. Purple, you had mentioned um, in your in your remarks this evening that you the town was going to list a number of priorities um, for what they were go going to be asking the um, state legislature for. Is that going to be in the town's priority? So I'm gonna. I, I think I'm gonna put Chief Morrow on the spot um, because I think that that was discussed prior to me getting there. But you can just tell me if I'm wrong. I think one of the issues with I have no problem putting that on the list for at least for consideration because I know it's been discussed previously. I think the issue in the past has been the height of the of the walkover because of the double stack trains, um, and, and um, you know. But I have no problem including it in the list and, and seeing if there's some consideration for it. I, I don't know if there's been. I it, don't use the train, but okay. I, I'm just I'm reminded. Um, uh, years ago when the train came in I know that that came up and, and former selectmen did not want that because of aesthetics right. um, but considering that the train is here it's been here for over a decade now and it has such use um, in fact so much use that a private um, 70 car lots going in which I think is great um, I've supported that as, as a member of the neighborhood um, but you know and, and then the remarks that came up when the legislators were here last time if that's something that um, the public and obviously the the letter is going to come from not just you but the board of selectmen so i'm just interested in whether or not that would be something that you and or the board would be considering based on pu the public um <clears throat> i wouldn't say outcry but the the public public interest sure an interest for that particular sure. um 
area of improvements right. uh, at that MBTA station. Right. Well, we started on one side of the tracks mm -hmm. and then having to walk down the stairs under the bridge yeah. up, you know, so I, I understand from a physical point of view. Yeah. So I, I think it makes sense to at least, you know, ask the question and if they're willing to give us money for it and there is then no public support or the board decides they don't want to move in that direction, then the money can be applied elsewhere down there. So, I mean, there's, there's, you're not going to get as much as you need to do everything you need to do. That's right. So but you can ask for tons of things. The worst they can say is no. Down. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to also skip down to the consent agenda relative to consent agenda item number two. Award contract for the fire department shingle roof replacement and ventilation remediation project. We have three town employees here who I assume would, I, I'm confident would rather be elsewhere rather than here. So why don't we, we address number two, uh, Mr. Parent or Mr. Uh, Chief Morrow. Um, we have in our, just so you know, we have in our packet the, uh, the summary of the condition and the proposed One moment. Copy of the bid documents um, and a letter of recommendation from Raymond T. Gurton, G U E R T I N, architect. Um, the low bidder is Mike's Construction Company, Dudley, Mass. Uh, Mr. Purple, is there anything that we need to read or discuss further um, before we ask? Mr. Parent, some questions? No, that's fine. I, I think I'll just give a general overview. Sure. So this is, uh, if you recall, last winter, um, you know, we had some significant uh, ice dams and roof damage at the fire station. Um, that was covered by insurance. Uh, the claim totaled $225,000. Yeah, $225, um, we had money in the budget uh, to do the engineering and design work for a new roof for the fire station. This is something that had been planning and we said that we would do that this year and then next year we would do uh, the actual construction. Um, the uh, insurance adjuster uh, strongly recommended that the repairs and that the roof be taken care of as soon as possible so that this type of issue didn't happen again. Obviously, if it did, the insurance company would cover it again. Um, but there goes, you know, our premiums, our experience, and, and everything else in that. So um, uh, Mr. Parent, along with Mr. Ballantyne, uh, you know, attended the advisory committee meeting and sought a reserve fund transfer, transfer in the amount of $64,700 for the new contract. And that was uh, granted by advisory out of the reserve fund in order to get this done now. Um, and uh, so in terms of the process from this point forward, you approve the contract. The contract will then be, you know, signed and executed by all parties. They'll move forward with the work. And I believe we're looking at, what, six weeks? About six weeks, six I'd say, should we we'll wrap process it up. So that before snow flies, we have that all buttoned up and taken care of. The, uh, the new meeting room, the, I call it the new meeting room at the <laughs> fire station, it looks new. Um, we'll continue to look that way through the winter because the roof will be solid. Uh, Mr. Parent, one question I have, uh, it's a question I don't think it raises to, to an area of a concern, is that we're, we're going to be spending about $65,000 on, on this roof of the fire department and we are at least preparing to perhaps renovate, uh, build. We don't know exactly what we're going to do with the fire department, but whatever we're going to do it's possible it's going to be done in a year and a half or, or two years. Is, is this a, a, an expense that is, is necessary in order to maintain uh, or it's, we'll never capture the money back if, if the building is, is gutted and renovated? I mean, this expense needs to be happen now? This has to happen now, yes. That's an emphatic yes. Okay. I mean, I believe you toured the building last year yes. during the damage. To ask our firefighters to go through that again would be very unreasonable in my opinion. I needed to ask the question anyway. Totally understand. Any, any further questions? I toured the building last year with Chief Morrow and talked with Mr. McFerrant. I mean, we don't have an alternative here. No, we don't at this point. In my opinion, there's no alternative. Done. Mr. Semino? I just would note that the consulting architect supports the selection of the low bidder, which isn't always the case, so I'm ready to vote. Okay. Is there a motion? Uh, I'm, go ahead, Brian. I'll move that we 
award the contract for replacement of the roof and ventilation remediation project at the fire station to Mike's Construction Company, 332 Mason Road, extension Dudley, Mass, in the amount of 64700 Second. 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 Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great night. <clears throat> so it's it's seven fifteen, and uh, the uh, candidates to be interviewed um, have not appeared. You, you have uh, you have clocked dyslexia tonight, apparently, because it's seven thirteen and a half. Let's actually, do the late. It's actually it's seven fifteen. That, that's what everybody else is talking about. Is anyone waiting in the hall, though? The doors, are, both doors are closed. <laughs> we can wait a couple of minutes. Well, we do uh, if, if you'd like, I can just give you an update on the conversation that I had with one of the candidates. Yes, please. Uh, so one of the candidates for the sidewalk construction committee is Matthew Chase, and he had a uh, previous commitment and was not able to attend tonight but I did speak with him uh, about his interest in this committee mark is a four-year resident in Southboro they have two children uh, one uh, a nine-year-old at the Woodward School also a two and a half year old he works currently for the engineering firm VHB in their Worcester office he uh, works with the folks who are working with the town on the Main Street project, but he himself has not been assigned to work on that project. Uh, started his engineering career working on land development projects and has transitioned to transportation engineering and roadway design projects since that time. His extensive work experience on this ty these types of projects, particularly involving sidewalk construction and knowledge that he's gained from his work experience I think is going to be extremely beneficial to the tasks that the sidewalk committee will be undertaking. I did uh, talk with him about his availability to attend the meetings uh, and relayed the message that we anticipated a pretty aggressive meeting schedule this fall uh, and he indicated that you know with enough uh, advance notice certainly they can at the first meeting of the committee they can determine what their meeting days nights are going to be uh, but with advance notice he can uh, arrange his schedule accordingly so he does not see attendance at the meetings as an issue thank you mr. Shea um, so we have uh, four candidates for two positions uh, we have the report that mr. Shea gave on mr. Chase we uh, spoke with Mr. Bazakis. Am, am I saying that correctly? Uh, at our last meeting, um, we got a one-page uh, facsimile from a T Timothy Litt, L I T T, which uh, provides uh, just his address, his email address, and what his occupation is, and nothing else. So, um, substantively, I don't know much about Mr. Litt other than what's in front of me and, and I assume my other board members are in a similar position with regards to Mr. Litt and then we have Ms. Goring uh, G-O-R-I-N-G who has submitted a more comprehensive uh, information packet so that we at least can get a snapshot shot of her background her experience and her interest in the committee did, did you indicate earlier that you expected her to be here or did she indicate that she was planning on being here? I believe that's what Mr. Purple said. And did we interview Mr. Chase offline because we knew he wasn't going to be here? That's correct. Correct. Right. He had reached out to let Mark know mm -hmm. that he had a conflict with this evening. And um, are there any, does anyone have a motion? Uh, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. If I may. Um, I did not support the sidewalk construction recommendation committee. 
I think it's more comprehensive than we are assuming up here anyway. I believe, and I'm not sure if Brian has changed his opinion, it belonged in the hands of the Public Works Planning Committee, but we're beyond that now. I would like to suggest, since apparently there appears to be a lot of interest in this committee, just in the discussion itself, that it needs to be a formalized committee, not an ad hoc committee, and it needs to be appointed for one year. By making it an ad hoc committee, we have to revisit this in three months. It's additional time taken away from the town clerk's office, from Maureen, who's our secretary. She's not a secretary, she's an administrative secretary for the Board of Selectmen. And there's a conflict of interest test that everyone needs to take. I mean, it just seems like we're stumbling over ourselves, creating more work unnecessarily. So I'm recommending that it not be an ad hoc committee, that it be a committee if we're going to do it, and it's self for residents. And Karen would act in an ex official capacity. The police department, fire chiefs can participate if they choose to. They should really be focusing on the Public Works Facilities Committee. And recreation, I'm sure they'll submit whatever information they need to submit to this committee to work on uh, bringing something to Public Works Planning, the Board of Selectmen, or Town Meeting. And uh, I'm concerned about the level of work for a three-month appointment. We're going to have to go through this whole exercise at the town clerk's office and put it back on our agenda. So is that, is, are you saying that that is a three-month appointment because it's ad hoc, or is it only three months because so we the anticipate that right. they would have a recommendation by a date within those three months? Right. Mr. Smith. Yeah, I'm going to respectfully disagree with Mrs. Fan. If, in fact, in fact, um, rather than make this a 12-month committee, if we if we're uncomfortable with three, I would rather not have one at all. I'm guessing that Mrs. Galligan is maybe regretting she ever brought this up. I think we we're, we're on our verge of blowing this up into something much bigger than it was ever anticipated. Um, at least I, that's where I've been on this for a little while. And I'm not convinced we need to make it bigger. Um, so those are my thoughts on that. So, Mrs. Fan, if reading behind, between the lines, it, I get the <clears throat> sense that you'd like to uh, revise the charge, reconstitute the committee, and start anew with the one-year project. My original suggestion, which failed, was that it remain with the DPW superintendent and the Public Works Committee. They seem to be working well together. They're supportive of the DPW superintendent, and I think they can come to terms with a recommendation for this town with forums for the community. I think, I don't, I know we're not gonna satisfy everyone, Karen, but I think this is something we don't necessarily need. I think you have a working committee that works well with you and you've been successful with the three recommendations you brought to town meeting with their help and support. Well, my, my only uh, comment to that is that uh, <clears throat> I, was it just the four of us that voted last time on the uh, constitution of the committee? Um, I think so. And um, I, be, I believe that it was at least three to one that we uh, were of the opinion that the committee should be comprised of the various uh, members that have already applied, Council on Aging, Recreation, Public Works. Um, and I'm not inclined to go back and revisit that. Um, but again, I can certainly be outvoted in that regard. So let's just try to advance this and make a decision and then move forward. If we, ha if we had questions of any of these candidates, we would not be able to get a response. Well, I mean, that's the nature of the, the committee appointment process. We, we, uh, we, we, uh, we put our agenda out, we solicit volunteer forms, we identify specific times on the agenda for the interviews. If they don't show up, you're right, we can't interview them. Um, but that's the, the nature of a volunteer system that we have, so. Well, there's yeah. two names on the list already that we, Mr. Harrington is a representative of Council on Aging. Yes. Doreen Ferguson represents the Recreation Commission. Sue Bost was recommended by the Public Works Planning Committee. Everyone else, with the exception of the public work, uh, excuse me, public safety, we've identified. 
And the I school, mean, the we've identified yeah. those individuals. Yeah, and the school, the school has. Uh, we don't know who that individual is. You do. We haven't. It's yeah. not on our list for appointment. No, I know. I spoke with. I spoke with Christine Johnson. Jim Randall, is is there, uh, is who they would recommend for appointment. Okay. And I, I would agree with Mrs. Fanf and Mr. Rooney with regard to the. You know, the unfortunate lack of ability to interview two of the candidates. I mean, we did interview Mr. Bazakis last week. Uh, we had a proxy interview of Mr. Chase this week. I think, to me, that carries uh, significant um, weight over the other two. And Mrs. Goring was planning on coming to this meeting. I believe Karen reached out to her because she's been very active on the Pockville Road area with a petition and 200 signatures. I, I would, um, I'm, I'm in favor of moving forward. I would, I would encourage her if she is interested um, to attend the meetings but not as a voting member if we don't put her on. That's just me. I would, and I always also say with regard to the 90 days, I mean, it, again, I, I may miss, uh, miss, have misunderstood the original intent here, but if this is not something that can be fruitful in 90 days, then, you know, then so be it. Um, I, I, I just don't want to create more bureaucracy than we need in town. But, I, but I, I think the nature of what we've been asked to do as a board in terms of appointing this committee uh, is the reason why I'm not sure whose original idea it was, but um, the the not not the idea of the committee, the idea of 90 days. Um, it's the reason why uh, if I, if it wasn't my idea, I certainly support it because I think we can get in and get out and get on with building some sidewalks here. Yeah, I mean, you know, as much as we like to, we're not always going to be unanimous in our votes, and we'll, we can state our state our positions, and we vote the way that we vote, and then we move forward, but. One thing that I'm not in favor of doing is putting this on another agenda to see if Ms. Goring or Mr. Litt show up to be interviewed. Right. Um, again, that's just kicking it down the road. And again, I think it's time for us to make a decision. I'm prepared to vote to uh, uh, appoint two uh, committee members this evening. Um, uh, and we see how the vote goes. But Did anyone else have a conversation with Mr. Chase other than Mr. Shea? Mr. Shea was asked to, um, correct, to correct. speak to speak with Mr. Chase. So no, we all did not, uh, or no one else in addition to Mr. Shea uh, spoke then to him. I guess but we I do have his, his packet I information. Know that. So can I ask a question of Mr. Shea? You can ask absolutely. You don't need to ask me that. You well, no, I, I. But it's secondhand. That's why I'm not comfortable asking it. Um. This is not meant to be to to, to, yeah, negative as far as my questioning, but we have hired VHB to do consulting work for the town itself of Main Street and Route 30. Correct. Mr. Chase works in that office. Correct. Maybe not on this project, but will they be putting out bids on this project, Main Street? To me, there's a conflict. Well, I might share your your thought on that. And just to clarify, though, do you mean would they be would they be seeking to bid on on design and construction of sidewalks that this committee might recommend? Is that is that your? Yes. Yeah, I have the same concern. Maybe to the point where they would be precluded if Mr. Chase participated. But I guess we can cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah, I think for the work that that this committee no is going to be doing right now, I mean, we're not going to get to. Well, well we're not going to get gonna anywhere. We shouldn't be putting it together. Report. There's going to be a recommendation report that's prepared. And personally, I think that the experience that Mr. Chase brings is, would be invaluable to that committee to give them guidance in you know, the, the proper areas to focus on sidewalks and impacts that sidewalks would have on existing roadways. So I think all in all, it would be a benefit. Um, you know, whether or not the firm he works for would ever pursue the design of any of these projects were these to move forward. I think that's, you know, a matter to handle in the future. And again, as Mr. Cimino said, if it came to either his firm being precluded or if his firm were not precluded, then him stepping down, if his firm did pursue it, then that would, we'd have to cross that at the time. Okay. Well, I, I would move to appoint uh, Mr. Bazakis and Mr. Chase to the Sidewalk Construction Recommendation Committee. Second. Any further discussion? We can't take them separately. Um, you, 
So for the 37. Okay. Let me rephrase my motion then. I would move that we appoint Matthew Chase to the Sidewalk Construction Recommendation Committee. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One. One. Um, I would move um, that we appoint Robert Bazakis to the Sidewalk Construction Recommendation Committee. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We have our committee. So. Mr. Bazakis, thank you for your uh, palpable interest in showing up at multiple meetings and listening to the same thing over and over again. We <laughs> certainly appreciate your commitment. And, uh, and again, just to be clear, Ms. Ferguson, Chief Morrow, Sue Baus, Bill Harrington, and Jim Randall are also appointed as the uh, people appointed as the representatives to fill those. Uh, Mr. Randall has to wait till the next meeting so we can appoint him. Mr. Shea, are you asking me or Mr. Purple that? Uh, I guess Mr. Purple. Yeah. So I would, um, I think that, you know, the board needs to, you know, appoint all those people as filling those positions. This evening? I don't know why not this evening. Okay. So do you want to do Do you have a letter from the superintendent from Mr. Randall? I have an email that I got this afternoon from the superintendent that that was the person that she was appointing. It was the school, it was the designee from the school. Fine, as long as you have documentation. So well, I, would, I will I'll move that we appoint Doreen Ferguson, Chief Morrow, Sue Boust, Bill Harrington, and Jim Randall to the sidewalk committee. Uh, insofar as those are the designees of their various uh, component uh, boards or committees, I would agree. Second. Um, in terms of further discussion, the public safety officials, there's supposed to be two. No, it's only it's only one. All right. Yeah, it's only one. That was one. Okay. Sorry, it, it should. It's, okay. It should be a one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any further discussion? Can we leave it vague so they both can show up? They can show up. Anyone can show no, up. No, instead of identifying just one of them, they both bring different expertise to the table. Who are we talking about? Yeah. Public safety. Uh, which two of them? Chief Morrow or Chief Paulus? I'm not sure who. Chief Morrow was recommended in the previous correspondence that we had. Right. Aye. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 That was a bit of a rocky road, but we got there. Um, no pun intended. All right. The rocky sidewalk. Um, approve, consent to join the item number one. Minutes from September 22, 2015. Are there any uh, iterations or edits to those I minutes? I made edits, but I'm not sure if they've been transcribed that you had them. It was the second page under 715. Can I make a suggestion in terms of minutes moving forward that yep. before they be put on the consent agenda and before they be put out um, for review that we get the, uh, the right minutes that everyone has edits done and then we'll put them on the agenda to approve it rather than doing it in a three-step process? Mr. Purple? Yes. Okay, so yeah. why don't we skip over number one? Agreed. We've already dealt with number two. Number three, accept donation to be allocated to the library donation account. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, number four, approve fiscal year 17 budget calendar. Mr. Uh, Purple? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is the annual uh, budget calendar that, uh, that we put out um, and uh, provide to the departments um, that uh, uh, when the uh, budget article, which budget to do, uh, warrant articles that have uh, uh, financial uh, attached to them, capital requests uh, when the warrant closes, um, and just kind of uh, sets out the budget calendar for the year so everybody can understand when everything is due. Um, we've already provided this in draft form uh, to the departments. Uh, we are having a department head meeting next Tuesday, so they will have this in final form. We want to give everybody a little bit of a heads up as to what was coming. They understood it was a draft. Um, and uh, the, uh, um, it, once you approve it tonight, it will be uh, cast in stone. 
question. Warrant articles closed Tuesday, January 5th. Yes. That includes, I would assume, petition articles. Yes. Would have to be citizens' petitions or anything would have to be in before. That's correct. Unless we reopened it. Right. And we'll make sure we'll make sure that we get that this informa get this information out so everybody is aware of that fact. Any further questions? No. Um, is there a motion, Mr. Smith? I move we adopt the uh, draft FY17 budget calendar as um, included in the packet. Is there a second? Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item five: accept resignation of Michael Wirtz from the Economic Development Committee. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, item six, reappoint Luis Clow, C-L-O-U-G-H, to the Southboro Cultural Arts Council, term to expire October 22, 2017. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item seven, reappointment of Jane Lesniewski, L-E-S-N-I-E-W-S-K-I, to the Southboro Cultural Arts Council, term to expire October 22, 2017. So moved. Second. Aye. All in favor? Sorry. Aye. Aye. And a reappointment of Janie Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, to the Southboro Cultural Arts Council, term to expire October 22, 2017. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we had a bit of a, a short public comment, but to the extent there's any further public comment, we'll take that now. Not seeing any, uh, move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming. Thank you.